I spent 10 glorious years of my life in Oxford as an undergraduate, a postgraduate and a fellow. And this is the first time I've spoken in the Oxford Union. Now, the responsibility for this lies fairly and squarely with William Haig. <laughs> William was president of the union when I came up. I came dutifully along to this debate, the no confidence debate, the next debate, the debate after, the debate after that. Was I called? Not once. Why? It may be because there was some, he understood that I wasn't going to, likely to be a supporter of his in uh, due course. But the union was then run by something called the Maudlin Machine. The, the Maudlin Machine, <laughs> it, clearly, it clearly is still going, it's clearly still going strong. Now, the Maudlin Machine was Maudlin, and as I recall, I think Christchurch and I think Balliol, if you were very lucky. Unless you went to those three colleges, Mr. President, you couldn't get called. Now, as one member of the Maudlin Machine told me, he said, Andrew, you stand no chance. Keeble, southern outskirts of Birmingham, he said. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to get called. Anyway, every cloud has a silver lining. As a result of not being called and getting involved in other things, I quickly stopped coming to the union and got involved instead in local politics. I got stuck into local elections and local issues, and as a postgraduate, I became uh, a member of Oxford City Council. Uh, I became Oxford, a member of Oxford City Council at the age of uh, 23, when I was by about 15 years the youngest member, which was a great training, I can tell you, for becoming a member of the House of Lords at the age of 42, <laughs> where, as somebody said when I arrived in the chamber, my God, it's child labour. <laughs> so, so you can... You, you can uh, You can't, so you can't start in politics too young, and it's great that you're all getting stuck into it now. However, becoming a local councillor taught me that there are two Oxfords. There is the Oxford of, of the Dreaming Spires. There is also, if you go up the Cowley Road, there's Temple Cowley, there's Blackbird Lees. There's some of the poorest and most disadvantaged parts of the country within a mile or two of this building. And if you want to see high unemployment, in particular mass youth unemployment, and the problems of council estates and poor skills, as well as getting involved in the union, I do hope that those of you who are new to Oxford will also get involved in local politics, local societies, and get to know something about your city. Now, back in, um, back in 1981, when I came up, one of my great friends in Oxford politics was Martin Horwood. It's quite untrue to say that there were only two, uh, was only one member of the Oxford Liberal Club, but I do remember another one at the time. <laughs> and uh, Martin was president of the Oxford University Liberals, while I was president of the Oxford University Social Democrats. It was then called the Liberal SDP Alliance. It was a kind of coalition, except that we got on. <laughs> the, the first time I stood for the council, it was for the central district of Oxford, around the area we're now in, where most of the students live. Now, the council at that time was trying to get rid of the kebab vans. I don't know if they're still there. On, they're still there on, on George Street and the High. And I became the great saviour of the kebab vans. I got petitions going. I stood by the kebab van. I, and so the fact that they're still there, ladies and gentlemen, is all my responsibility. Martin, however, designed my posters, which had under these... Uh, uh, on these posters, want a kebab, vote Adonis, and I became known as Donna Kebab. <laughs> the problem was I lost that election by 20 votes uh, to the Labour Party. Yeah. The, so the following year, I was selected to fight in the North Ward, where you have very large houses, lots of dons, lots of wealthy residents. They do not like kebab vans. <laughs> uh, so I did not resurrect these posters. Instead, I was green Adonis. I was fighting for Port Meadow against developers, large and small, who were seeking to concrete over North Oxford. And uh, you did not hear a word from me about the kebab vans uh, during that election. However, I didn't change my mind. Uh, the words credibility and principle would have come to mind if I had sought to do that. But Paul Martin, my good friend from the Liberals 20 years ago, now has to... not on relatively small matters like kebab vans on the high street but on really big issues that affect the country day in day out has had to change his mind on almost all of them in the course of 24 hours issue after issue month after month martin fought the last election against tuition fees then he voted to triple them no i didn't nick clegg tells us he is sorry he made the pledge and wishes he could retract it but all I can say is there are millions of voters are now sorry they voted for the Lib Dems and wish they could retract their votes too. Yeah. 
Or, or were you really in favour? Or were you really in favour of the <laughs> last election? I opposed the rise in tuition ah. fees, and I did not vote to triple them. Oh, right. Sorry. Another somebody else who has no confidence in Majesty's government. We're slowly dismantling <laughs> the other side. We, we've already, Mr. President. In the, Mr. President, my side is doing very well. We've now lost one of its MPs. I hope we can have more interventions and we can win the debate even before the speeches are finished. Uh, but it also, it doesn't stop there. Humiliation after humiliation is being leaped on the Lib Dems. Martin fought the last election in favour of employment rights for workers. Then he suddenly woke up after the Chancellor's speech this week and realised he's no longer in favour of employment rights for workers, provided they're given a few shares and then all their employment rights can go. He was in favour of a mansion tax, and then he woke up after George Osborne's speech to the Tory conference to find that had gone too. Now, like many of you, I watched the Olympics, and in particular the diving, which I thought was awesome, with, uh, with huge enthusiasm this summer. I couldn't believe it was possible to do something called a triple reverse pike, half twist, somersault and tuck, and go clean into the water. The problem for the Lib Dems is that they have attempted to do a triple reverse pike, <laughs> half twist, somersault and tuck, but alas, there's no water, just a concrete slab. <laughs> and And I'm afraid there is nothing left of them. So, Mr. President, the first reason for having no confidence in the government is that it isn't a coalition. It is simply a Tory government sustained by Lib Dem votes, and it has no mandate to govern on that basis. This isn't a... On a, on a point of information, is it not a bit rich to be lectured about a mandate to govern from a member of the House of Lords? <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> I, I was in favour of an elected House of Lords. What did that lot do? They killed it two months ago. There will be no elections to the House of Lords. There will be no, there will be no elections to the House of Lords, thanks to the government. They haven't even managed to abolish the by-elections that take place for hereditary peers, which are the most insane elections since Old Sarum returned two members of Parliament on the basis of five people voting. So I'm not taking any lectures on House of Lords reform from the, uh, uh, from the supporters of the government. Now, what this coalition... Remember the Rose Garden? Do you remember the Rose Garden, all the CPO and all of that? And this was all supposed to be uh, a great coming together. The essential intellectual proposition on which the, this government was based was Lib Dem constitutional reform on the one side, allied to Tory austerity on the other. Lib Dem constitutional reform was supposed to produce us a more liberal, more open, all that society. Tory austerity was supposed to produce us growth. Now, the Lib Dem constitutional reform is completely dead. Nothing has happened. AV, gone. House of Lords reform, gone. So the Lib Dems now are governing with no other basis than supporting the Conservatives. When it comes to the Conservatives, we did think we were getting a bit more than austerity. Do you remember that thing called the Big Society? Uh, which no longer appears anywhere in anyone's speeches. Now, I'm always on the lookout for good ideas. And uh, we look to see what they might be from the up-and-coming generation of Tories. There's this wonderful book called Britannia Unchained, produced by a group of Conservatives who are now many of them ministers, which is the only contribution that the Conservatives have made to intellectual debate over the last uh, year. <laughs> and, it does, and it does help me with this concept of aspirational Britain. What should we aspire to be? Well, what apparently these great authors... Conservative MPs and ministers tell us we should aspire to be is to get rid of what they call the swollen, cosseted state in which risk aversion has become embedded as a central policy of government. And what is the great objective we should be aiming for? Vietnam, where capitalism, Vietnam, ladies and gentlemen, where capitalism as chaos, a maelstrom of scooters, hawkers, and makers, each scrapping to turn a profit. But it continues. The trade-off between risk and reward is more visible here than anywhere else in Vietnam because, as Steve Jobs once famously said, it's more fun to be a pirate than to join the Navy. Or, well, ladies and gentlemen, if I was sailing in the English Channel, I would rather be off the coast of England than off the coast of Somalia. Those, that is the choice that we face. We have a government committed to austerity, which has failed. We have a deficit that has gone up. We have employment that has gone up. We have growth that has gone down. Austerity has failed. Plan A is clearly not viable. The future, ladies and gentlemen, lies with the Labour side 
of the House and with a credible plan for growth, for jobs, for tackling youth unemployment, and that can only come by removing this government and starting with a new one. Thank you very much.